This is Geometry, Chapter 7, Section 1, in which we will be studying ratios and proportions. When we talk about a ratio, all we're talking about is a comparison between two quantities. And here's the key, we're using division. We're not saying that something is bigger than something else or something is smaller. We're just looking at how they compare to one another in a division frame of mind. Now the way we write these things, the ratio of A to B, we can write it as A to B with the word to in there. Or we can write it as A to B with a colon in there, but it's still read A to B. Or we can write it as a fraction A over B. Now it doesn't matter to me which one of the forms you use. But whichever one you do choose, make sure you reduce to lowest terms. You wouldn't leave a ratio of 8 to 6. Those both can be divided by 2, so you would leave a ratio of 4 to 3. You would reduce it to lowest terms. You wouldn't make it 1 and a third. Okay, you wouldn't write a ratio as a mixed number. You would leave it as 4 to 3. So let's consider some high school somewhere where they have 190 teachers to go with their 2,650 students. Obviously not JWP. But our question is, what's the approximate student-to-teacher ratio at this school? Now they tip us off which way they want us to compare, students to teachers. So our students, 2650, go on top, and our teachers, 190, go on bottom. Now they're asking for an approximate student-to-teacher student ratio. Typically, you would report that as the number of students per one teacher. So I'm going to divide these two numbers out. 13.94 is what I get when I divide. Now you wouldn't report that if you were making a newspaper article or something. You wouldn't say 13.94. You would round that off to approximately 14 students per teacher. Okay. You've probably seen this little symbol before. It means approximately equal to. Don't get too wrapped up concerned about the approximate part. Just understand that 13.94 is practically speaking 14. Okay. Now sometimes we need to compare more than two quantities. And when that comes along, we use what we call an extended ratio. Typically, you write your extended ratios in the form A to B to C. And if you had to keep going A to B to C to D to E to F to G to right on down the line. I can't imagine too many cases where you'll need to go beyond three, to be honest. But we just keep extending them out as long as we need to. So let's do a couple of extended ratio problems. Okay. They tell us here that the ratio of the measures of the angles in some triangle is 3 to 4 to 5. The trick here, the question here, is to find the measures of each of the angles. Well, if they're in a ratio of 3 to 4 to 5, and since it's a triangle, I know that the total is 180, I can write an equation out of that. This one can become 3x, 4x, and 5x. 3x plus 4x plus 5x equals 180. Well, that's an easy equation to solve. Collect up and then divide. X is 15. Now, they want us to find the measure of each angle. So 3 times 15, 4 times 15, and 5 times 15. Okay. So we have our three angles. We have a similar problem here, and I threw this in on the same page mostly to make sure you're paying attention to what you're doing. 
the ratio of the measures of the sides of a triangle is 2 to 2 to 3. And the perimeter is 392 inches. A lot of you are going to see the word si uh, triangle, and you're going to jump right to 180. But there's a problem with that. 180 applies to angles. Here we're talking about sides. So 180 doesn't come into play. The perimeter, however, does. So 2x plus 2x plus 3x equals 392. Collect up and divide, and we find out that x is 56. Two of the sides are 112, because two of them were identical. And then the third side is 3 times 56, or 168. That's ratios in a nutshell. Now, if we have some equation that says two ratios are equal, we call that a proportion. Okay. Proportions we can typically write two ways. A over B equals C over D. Or if you want to write it in a little more compact form, you can write it A to B equals C to D. In both of these proportions, A and D are called the extremes, because they're on the extreme outside. B and C are called the means, because somebody decided to call them the means. Really couldn't tell you why they chose it. Now, if our proportion is true, then the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means. That is to say, the cross products are equal. You have known this for a long time. You just didn't know it quite in these terms. If I handed you a problem that looked like this over here particularly, and there were numbers in three of the spots, you would know exactly what to do. Cross multiply. Okay. Multiplication gives you a product. So you're using this rule. Cross products are equal. You just haven't known that that's the rule you're using. So they're going to ask us to solve some of these. And they're going to give us something that you're comfortable with, for starters x over 4 equals 11 over negative 6. So we'll do the cross multiply trick. And then to get x alone, we need to divide. And my calculator gave me negative 7 and a third. Okay. Now here, you have to be a little careful. We have negative 4 over 7, and we have 6 over 2y plus 5. When we cross multiply, we get negative 4 times this stuff equals 42. We need to distribute negative 8y, and be careful here, that's negative 20. Now, I know you grew up learning cross, multiply, and divide, but we can't just divide here. We need to get this 20 out of the way first before we can divide. That's why you'll often hear me say cross multiply and solve. Sometimes that will involve dividing, but sometimes it's going to involve other algebra. Just make sure you're aware of that. One last one of this nature. 7 over z minus 1 equals 9 over z plus 4. We'll cross multiply. I'm going to distribute. Now I'm going to move some variables around, subtract the 9z over, subtract the 28 over, because I'm not scared of negatives, and then do a little division, and I get 18 and a half. Okay. One last kind of problem that they're going to throw at us. They're going to ask us to write equivalent proportions. Based off of some proportion they give us, we're going to have to write equivalent proportions from it. 
Okay? There are rules for how you can get to equivalent proportions. Consider this proportion that we're given, A over B equals C over D. Well, another proportion that's equivalent to it would be if you did the reciprocal of both sides. Okay? That's the same proportion. Or it's equivalent. It's not identical, but it's equivalent. Another choice would be to trade the places of the two extremes, A and D. Or we could trade the places of the two means, B and C. And notice that's what we did. We took the C and the B and traded their places here. Compare this one to this one. Or we traded the A and the D if you compare these two. Or we did a reciprocal of both. Okay, everything always goes back to comparing to this original proportion when you talk about that. So we dealt with ratios, including extended ratios. We dealt with proportions. Remember, it's cross, multiply, and solve. And then we wrote some equivalent proportions. As always, if you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we will see you in class.